Hey, you probably all wonder what, what I'm doing here. Um, this is just my remote. By the way, I'm super nervous. So I moved to San Francisco six months ago. And kind of this is like my second talk, kind of. Uh, like the first one was here, so I can't really lie about this, like being my first talk. Um, so let's try this out if this works. Because like, uh, so my name is Nico. Uh, the talk's called The Zoo of Your Dreams. You're going to like hopefully find out what this is. And let's try this out. Oh, no. <laughs> one sec. There we go. Cool. Now the remote works. <laughs> this is me. Hi. Uh, so I realized I wanted to like include my Twitter picture. And then I realized I can like just like actually just stand here. I should like probably stand in the light. <laughs> Okay, another trick. Uh, cool. So, I'm, uh, I studied in a town called Schwäbisch Gmünd uh, in Germany, and I just wanted to like, put this out there because we have a pretty badass uh, coat of arms. Um, <laughs> and the name is like, unpronounceable for anyone uh, from the US. Uh, my, my coworker calls it Schwab Schwab. Um, <laughs> and uh, so, I work at Figma. Figma is a collaborative design tool that uh, lives in the browser, and also this slide was built in. Uh, the slides was built in Figma. And, uh, one question for you is, what would you imagine uh, if you think about the zoo of your dreams? And just like put that idea a little bit in your head. And maybe the logo of the zoo of your dreams. It might look like something like this. I'm, I'm like really, really bad at, at, at any kind of like nice looking design. Um, but I heard there are designers here. And I have three laptops open. And they're all running Figma. So uh, just like a little bit, like I need three volunteers who are willing to like just riff off an idea of like building a logo for any kind of zoo of your dreams. You can like mix it up with anything from the internet. You have like around like five to seven minutes to do that. Is there anyone who would like love to like just do this challenge? Hmm? Anyone? Come on, come on, come on. Don't leave me hanging. It's, it's going to be fun. Perfect. Big applause for you. Do you know how to use Sigma? <laughs> okay, it's going to be fun. Uh, you, have the, you have the pen tool here, and you have the pencil tool here, and you can copy and paste images from Google. Okay, is there anyone else who would love to, who would love to try? Come on, come on. I'm not, it doesn't have to be pretty. It can also look like this. Like, seriously, it, like, if it's just a Z, it's going to be fine, too. Hmm? You? Yeah? Do it. Front row. Come on, come on, front row. <laughs> okay, I have to just do this. Okay, one last one. Otherwise, otherwise I have set up one, one, for, one for free. Hmm? No one? No one? Oh, at the back. <laughs> nice. Uh, the password is exclamation mark. Figma. No, Figma, exclamation mark, one, two. It's a guest account, but the problem is that we are not allowed like, to like, set this up without a password. Cool. Uh, so, thanks a lot for that. Um, and what I have interesting, oh, again. <laughs> is the question is like, what is creativity? Um, so, who in the room would design, uh, define, design themselves, uh, define themselves as uh, designers? It's funny, like, I don't really see anything. Um, <laughs> And who would define themselves as engineers? Okay. And so what I find interesting is when I tell people in Germany that I'm a designer, it's like they most of the time think about like something like this. I'm just like smoking a blunt and then like having all those creative, creative kinds of ideas and it's like, uh, like all like fancy and nice and beautiful. And oh, by the way, don't tell that my mom that I'm like putting a lot of weed on, in, in Germany. It's still illegal. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the process of bisociation. So the process, the process of bisociation is how we actually like connect different chunks of ideas in our head together. This is funny. Um, hmm? It's collaborative then probably. And so that's a, that's a process of, of by association. So we like can connect different chunks in our head together. And it's fascinating uh, to think about that in a way that like, let's say you're like really deep into one specific topic and you have like certain chunks in your head that can be filled with like certain kinds of information. And if you're like really, really deep, you can feel, you can feel really, really stuck sometime. And that's because like um, all of those chunks of like information that you have in your head already basically made all the cross connections. So a new idea is not like this eureka moment. The new idea 
is basically just let's see if I can make uh, this new idea is basically just a new connection between different chunks of information and um, and so just uh, different chunks of information and uh, let's say you're like really really stuck in this one specific problem and and then you walk out and you walk out and uh, like you 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 see a dog and you're like oh that's a beautiful dog and and like can I can I have that dog it's like really tiny and then what suddenly happens in your head is that this chunks of information of this one specific topic that you were suddenly like kind of like summarize themselves into uh, into like just one of those chunks and then there's the dog and then there's a car there's a, your coworker you're talking about and suddenly you have this moment or like you just take a walk and you like think about different things. And suddenly you could connect those things together. And um, so that's kind of like the takeaway number one of like the diversity of thought. I'm actually not sure if that's a phrase, but uh, diversity of thought is important. So to be able to connect things together, to be creative, you need different kinds of information in your head. And so what does that have to do with collaboration? And um, just looking at this beautiful stock photo uh, is that <laughs> What happens here is that this person here, basically right now, just put something on the whiteboard and somebody else sees this. So, so collaboration is, is, partly, is partly like two, two steps. One person creating something and, uh, another, and then communicating that. So the communication can either be someone looking at this whiteboard and seeing this, uh, but it could also be by, through talking. And so what happens is that, that that person like puts this on the whiteboard, another person sees that, and then has a diverse set of information in your head, uh, and then like put something else on there. And then it goes back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And so that's the kind of the second takeaway. Collaboration leads to diversity of thought. There is a disclaimer though. Uh, collaboration, if it's done poorly, uh, can also result in the effect commonly known as groupthink. Uh, and another, another phrase there is hippo. I don't know uh, if you know what hippo is, like highest paid person's opinion. That, that is like the most important opinion in the room. And, um, oh, if you haven't heard of it, Google it, it's fascinating. Uh, because it's just like, it's just wrong. Like, just because the person is paid more doesn't mean that their idea is better. Um, but, so to counteract this, and, and this is what I find really interesting, is like, to counteract this, give people always time to think about stuff on their own before. Because you want a diverse set of information. But if as, as soon as someone starts by having an idea and putting it out there on the wall, other people just build on top of that idea, but don't bring in their diverse set of, 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 of thoughts, of feelings, of, of backgrounds into this, but they just like anchor around this one idea that was the first in the room. So coming back to the zoo of your dreams, this probably was too fast to create a logo. Um, this is a super, super funny experiment. I'm not, not exactly sure if that's now gonna work. Um, uh, so, on the page that the people are in. So this is right now, this is in Figma. And let's quickly see if there's already something here. No. Oh, oh, there's the first one. <laughs> Look at the one. <laughs> applause, applause for whoever did that. Uh, oh, look at this. Oh, this is actually really cute. Um, let's see if there's the first one. Oh! Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so putting them all here is, so since I asked you at the beginning, what was your zoo of dreams? What was your that you had in your head? Uh, by the way, big applause to everyone who like created those logos. Um, so the question of like, what was your zoo of dreams now happened that you had different things as inputs around that thing. And suddenly now you're like thinking differently about this. Now, like now I'm thinking about like something more graphical like this. Um, or, or like diving into my, my old Photoshop times and like, like going, going a little bit more crazy there. And, but there is more because collaboration can time travel. Uh, because what we just saw is basically only uh, direct collaboration, like synchronous collaboration, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, but collaboration can time travel, uh, can time travel for, for yourself, 
So by taking notes about ideas that might be interesting for me in the future or around a specific topic that is interesting, uh, I can like basically like hunch myself in the future of like, hey, Nico, you should probably think again about this. This is interesting. And 90% uh, of that is probably just crap and like I'm never like going to be looking at it again. But the other 10% are really, really important pieces that I'm at some point later in my life probably going to connect to some other thing. So uh, that's kind of important. But uh, as, we, as we saw for the first talk through Emily, that um, collaboration is also um, really good for like having the same kind of knowledge, not asking the same question 10 times in, around the room, and also just for like, like let's say you're working in a product, and that's, uh, it's like, and you, you have an idea, and you're like, oh, like I'm new to this, I'm gonna mock up something, and then somebody tells you, oh, we tried that already. I'm like, where is it? I wanna see it. I wanna see even the failure ones. I wanna even see the ideas that you had so I can build on top of them, just reiterate them and take them as input uh, for my for my diverse set, and and then the, the last one is also like for remote time zones. Let's say you work with remote people that are completely, let's say in, in Shanghai or like in a completely different time zone, and they want to collaborate with you too. So they want to like look into uh, the documents that you created. They want to look into uh, the stuff that you have. And and if you're just talking about this, it's it's like like then they don't hear it, and then they can't think further. So looking at this, diversity of thought is important. Uh, collaboration leads to diversity of thought if it's done well. And the last one is don't underestimate the power of asynchronous collaboration across time, aka note down your ideas. Thanks. <laughs>